record it. Sweet. So Patrick O'Brien Dempsey, Wild Chat Sports Podcast here. Super pumped to have him on. Pat, how are we doing, man? I'm doing good. Uh, you know, I'm I'm doing this from my car because they're replacing my AC unit today, so they've disconnected it. Uh, they're replacing my roof, sorry. They, so they've disconnected my AC unit on the day that it's going to be 95 degrees. First day of 2020, it's going to be over 90 in L.A., of course, right? <laughs> hey, hey, you know what, man? <laughs> L.A. sounds so good right now. You have no idea. Yeah. I'm I'm ready for summer. I mean, you're in the nice weather right now. I'm I'm jealous, but hey. I mean, yeah, I guess that was like kind of bragging, wasn't it? <laughs> I shouldn't be saying that. No, I'm, I'm stuck in here, man. Get me out of here. Get me. Out of here. I want I want the palm trees. Get me out there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yo, so um, yo, it's fine. We were just talking. Like, you're from Danvers, Mass. I'm from Andover, Mass. I mean, it's a small world, man. Yeah, man, I love it back there. Like I was saying, I made it back for Christmas with my wife and uh, my parents still live in Danvers, the house I grew up in. And they've got like a little pond in the backyard and we were playing pond hockey for a whole week with uh, all my nieces and nephews. It was like, it was perfect. That's perfect, man. Hey, Mikey Ruzioni is back. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because my, my nieces and nephews all play hockey and, and, you know, their teammates all come over to play and they're just staring at me like, <laughs> they, they get it. They get. They're like, I can't believe your uncle's Mike Ruzioni. <laughs> they're like, oh shit! Like, is he gonna body me or something? Like, is it uh, funny? Oh, yeah. It's awesome, man. This is awesome. So, I mean, maybe, uh, maybe talk about like how you got into uh, acting. You know? Yeah. So you know, it's funny. As I was doing, uh, I was going to Fitchburg State College in Mass, and I was finishing a, uh, and I guess it's now Fitchburg State University. Uh, I was finishing an internship in graphic design and uh, I was just sitting behind a desk. I was really, really like, you know, rambunctious. I, I just was like, you know what? I, I'm not made to sit behind a desk. I can't do this. So what am I going to do? And, and I was like, well, maybe I'll go to acting school. Sounds totally legitimate. Right. So I went on, uh, I went online to just for look to look for acting schools. And what I found was an open casting call for hockey players that could act. And they were auditioning like seven cities in the U S and Canada. And the auditions were ending the next day in Boston. Wow. Uh, so I sent in an email and I was like, Hey, I want to come in and audition. And I went in and auditioned. And from there I, um, you know, I auditioned seven times, I think in, in Boston. And then they flew me to LA twice in December of 2002 which is crazy how long ago that seems now. Uh, and yeah, then I found out in December of 02 that I got the part. That's so my, my first auditions, you know, it was like, that's crazy. Incredible. So what yeah. was your first movie? The first thing I ever, I never acted before ever. Wow. That's yeah. Incredible. So yeah, I just kind of stumbled into it uh, blindly, you know, and uh, I mean, it's it's uh, it truly still bl totally blows my mind, you know, that, yeah, that, that I got to do that. That's crazy. That's insane. Yeah. So, did anyone like refer to you, like say, hey, like you should go for this part, like, or or did you just see it out of the blue and you were like, well, you know, when I found out about it, my brother worked at a, a like an old VHS store mm. in in Danvers, yeah, and it was like really before every you you could find before you could find everything on the internet. And so I, I called him. I said, hey, I'm going to go audition for this thing. He said, yeah, we've got the documentary, the HBO documentary here on VHS. So I went down, I, I picked it up and I went home and watched it. And then he came home later and I was like, the only, the only guy I could be is Mike Ruzioni. He's the only one I could be. And not, not even knowing what the script was, you know, I didn't know anything about it. But, you know, I knew he scored the goal and all that stuff. I was like, I look like him. I'm a lefty. I'm the same size. I got a wicked hardcore accent, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it's hey, like, it's meant to be, man. Yeah. So I, you know, I, you know, and I started to find out through the process as we got sent to LA that they wanted me for Mike. I, I just didn't think I fit really anywhere else. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, lucky for me. I mean, it's a pretty pretty good spot to end up in with having no acting skills. That's, you know? <laughs> that's incredible, man. That's insane. So, like, what were your friends and family saying around this time when, you know, all of a sudden you went from graphic design to being in one of the best sports movies of all time, like, just like that? 
it's funny they were it's funny they were pretty low key about it i think like um i think because they had to be because they don't want to see your head get big you know what i mean like if you know and your true friends are the ones who are just gonna like knock you back down to reality too so you know i i don't think i ever i ever let it get to me maybe i did i don't i don't know but uh yeah it's it's um they were pretty low key about it. I think also because at first they didn't have, we didn't know what the movie was going to be when we were shooting it. It could have been a piece of shit. You know I mean, like I don't, I didn't know movies. I had never made a movie. We could have been making the biggest piece of garbage ever Hollywood's ever made. You know, yeah, like yeah. they, they get a bunch of guys who don't know how to act, who can play hockey and they think they're going to put a movie together, you know? So, I mean, we really, I really didn't know what it all was until like the, the the trailer the preview was released in like it was like november of 2003 mm. and then it was like and i don't know if you've seen the trailer it's like yeah. there's like, you know and i'm in the movie theaters and all of a sudden i see my face about 15 feet across with like snot rockets hanging out of my nose like thinking i'm as cool as hell you know i'm like oh yeah i'm gonna be in a movie you know like and all of a sudden i see myself in the preview and there's just snots pouring out of my face and was hanging on the side of my nose and I was like oh my god <laughs> and there was no way like and when it's you there's no way to objectively look at it and go oh yeah this is this is, looks good this you have no idea it's 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 too much to take in when you're looking at yourself on screen to be objective about it in any manner so you I had to rely on everybody else to go Holy shit, man. This is crazy. <laughs> you know? That's just like an incredible story, man. So was the rest of the cast like in the same boat? Like, were they like, did they have prior acting experience or? Well, for the most part, no. There were a couple guys that were actors. The guy who played Ralph Cox, he was, he was, a, he had done a small part in the movie, The Recruit with Al Pacino. Like he was in the opening scene of that. And then Eddie Cahill played Jim Craig and he had, you know, most notably been like, you know, a guest star in the show Friends. He was Jennifer Aniston's boyfriend, you know. So and then another guy, a couple other guys had some experience, but not nothing, you know, nothing quite like that. But yeah. most of us were just hockey players who got thrown into it. That's that's literally crazy. So you play so you played high school uh, or high school hockey? I'm yeah, I played. Yeah, I played Danvers High School, and then I went to Brewster Academy in uh, in New Hampshire, Wolfboro, New Hampshire, for a post grad year, and then I played at Fitchburg State. Wow, that's great, man! I don't know if you yeah. have, Dare Wade is uh, going to Brewster Academy. Who's that? Oh, I just saw that yesterday. Yeah, yeah, man. I was reading it to my wife. I was like, "What?" Uh, yeah, all of a sudden, Brewster has been like a basketball powerhouse in the yeah, past man. few years. Yeah, man, they, they got some notables in there, man. You got it. Crazy, huh? You're repping hard. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, so like, you know, overall, I mean, it sounds like, you know, that was like a huge adjustment. So like, what was like the typical day like of, you know, trying to, you know, prep, you know, for, for a scene or, you know, take us through the day of filming Miracle. All right, so we did, the whole process was about five months. It was like February to July of 2004. And uh, so the first month was really rehearsals. We got there, they were running us through eight hours on ice a day just to, you know, train and get ready and do all the, you know, have all the goals down, all the plays we needed to get. And then we would go back and do like three or four hours of acting work after that. So we had a coach that was working with all of us just to kind of loosen us up and get us accustomed to, you know, being comfortable doing all this stuff. So that was like the first month really. Um, and then the shooting began and it's for, for three months, two and a half months, it was like five days a week, 12 hour days you're shooting. So you're working a lot, you know? Um, but it was, it was super fun because, you know, we're on ice it was basically like a hockey team. We, you know, and we all lived together in a hotel in downtown Vancouver and none of us had had really a dime to our name beforehand. And, you know, all of a sudden we had some money we had, you know, we're in a totally different city and, and, you know, we just went around just like party ate, tore the, tore the city to pieces. <laughs> you know, it's funny. We had um, the guy who was the costume 
costume guy on Miracle. He was he was also the costume guy on Slapshot. <laughs> and he'd been working in the business for like uh, 30 years. Right. Sorry, I just had a phone call come and I had to decline it. He'd been working in the business for like 30 years. And he was like, there's there's only one movie that is a bigger shit show than this one has been. <laughs> it's like, and, and that was slap, and that was slap shot. <laughs> oh that's, hilarious. that's hilarious. I didn't even know that, though. The same copy yeah. designer. Wow. Yeah, that's crazy. So, yeah. I mean, what did you guys do, like, like offset? Like, what was the life like on set versus offset with, you know, a bunch of, you know, hockey players, like, you know, partying? You know, what was that like? Yeah, picture hockey team. I mean, it's it's exactly what it was. And we we became friends, you know, really quickly um, because you were, we're in a totally new place, Vancouver. Everybody was from – there was a couple guys from Vancouver – but most of us were not. We had never been there. We were just sort of exploring a new place, you know, just kind of on the weekends. We'd just roll around the city, see what we could find. Yeah, no, that's, that's insane, man. Yeah, it was, for, it, was as, it was as fun a time as I've ever had. Yeah. That's dope, man. That's dope. Like, and this is, like, right out, right out of college, too, right? So, like, yeah. did you, like, were people pushing you to, like, work two jobs, you know, during this time, you know, because – while you were acting and, you know, did, did they want you, did your family like want you to have another job during this time as well? Or was it just, all you know, it's, it's so funny. We knew so little about the business. We had no clue. So I, I find out in December, I, I get the part. They said, Oh, we'll have a flight for, you know, early February. We'll let you know the date. And so my parents, you know, I was getting ready to go up there and we knew the movie wasn't going to start shooting for a month. And uh, I, as I was leaving, my parents they, like, gave me like 500 bucks. And they said, when you, you get up there, you, you might have to get a job because, you know, we don't have the money to, to you know, to help you out for, for the month. So if you get up there, you know, hit, you know, hit the ground running, try to find some work so you can make some money until the movie starts. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I get, I get to Vancouver and, you know, we're flying first class. I've never been, over, you know, I've, bar- I've, I've been on like three flights in my whole life and two of them were the month before paid by Disney, you know? So uh, we show up to Vancouver, we get off the plane. There's a few of us coming from Boston and uh, they hand us an envelope. And I was like, what's this? And they were like, per diem. And I was like, what's per diem? I had no idea. And I open it up. And it's like $750 cash in Canadian. And I was like, what is this? <laughs> and I was like, is this till we start shooting the movie? They go, Oh no, you get this every week. And I was like, no way. I'm like, hey, mom, I get the book. I don't need to get a job. <laughs> that's insane, man. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's, that's how little I, I, I knew about what I was getting into. I, you know, I really had no clue. Hmm. That's crazy, man. That's yeah. two? Just 750 every week? Yeah, per diem. I think it, was, it might have been like seven thirty something, seven fifty. I can't remember, but yeah, I mean, it was more money than I had ever made in a week ever before. You know, that, that's and, insane. Uh, that's crazy. Yeah, so we didn't, and, and and you know, so you can imagine we get there, and all of us, like you know, most of us find out we're just getting handed cash. It was like the first night was just an absolute debacle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I can imagine. Yeah, we, we all became fast friends that first night. It was like hilarious. <laughs> oh my god! Do you remember like you guys just went to the bar, or, or was it just like? A- I, honestly, I don't. I I remember it was like you know quite a debacle. I don't remember where we went. I you know it's been twenty <laughs> years ago now, but yeah, I do yeah, remember yeah. Yeah, yeah. everyone got there. We were like, where do we go? And we just you know ended up out and about. You know, that's awesome. Probably man. a place called Earl's on top on uh, Robson. Is it Robson in Vancouver? Yeah, it, it just kind of ended up being our place. You know. Yeah, that's so dope, man. So did did Mikey Rosioni ever uh, join you uh, on you know Offset? Yeah, yeah, they came yeah. up there, and I got to meet him a little bit before we started shooting because he, you know, he lives not too far away in Winthrop. So you know, he was co- helping to coach his. Um, his kid's high school team at the time. So, you know, the Disney, they hooked me up with his number. They said, give him a call. And, and I was like, all right. So I went down there and skated with him and his high school team for a little bit just to get to know him. 
And what's funny is I actually ran into him for the first time since the premiere 16 years ago. I ran into him six weeks ago, maybe six or seven weeks ago. I had a Kings game right before everything shut down here. And um, I go with my buddy. My buddy calls me in the morning, goes, hey, you want my season tickets? I was like, yeah, sure. So he wasn't going. He was like, just take my tickets. It was like a one o'clock game. And so I meet up with some friends there and we're like sitting all of a sudden we look up on the jumbo and it's like, there's like a video of Mike and Ruzzi only scoring the goal. Then it like cuts to me from the movie. And I'm like, and my buddies are looking at me going, do they know you're here? Like, are, are they going to cut to you? You know, we're trying to figure out what's going on. I'm like, this is super weird that there's all these clips of him and me going on at the same time. Right. And then, you know, and then it like sort of announces him and then it cuts to him sitting in the luxury box up like up behind us. And I'm like, no way. Right. <laughs> so, what? What so we go. Yeah. So we go uh, we go in between periods to go get some beers and he's doing an interview with Jared Stoll does like the Kings, you know, in between period interviews now. So. And so we see him and my buddies are like, dude, we want to meet him so bad. Can you, I was like, yeah, 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 let's, let's. So, and I talked to the guy that worked with Kings. I'm like, are you wrangling Mike? And he was like, yeah, I go, well, I played him in the movie. I'd love to say hi. And the kid was like, oh my God. So we're sort of standing there waiting and there's like probably 40 people. And this guy comes up to me, he goes, hey man, is he your dad? Points at a I go, no. And he goes, oh man, you guys look exactly alike. <laughs> right I'm like, like this is out of nowhere right I'm yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Goes, yeah man he played him in the movie and the guy was just like <laughs> mind blown right which yeah. is so funny that some guy was like you guys look exactly alike so we got to i got to say hey to him and my, my friends got to meet him and we got a picture uh and i looked at him and I go man i really do look like him that's the weird thing like i, I totally we totally look alike yo you guys do man like that's hilarious. Like, you thought you guys were going to, like, just a chill, like, Kings game with your boys. Yeah. Like, son, like, <laughs> Mike Rubioni's, like, sitting right behind you looking <laughs> up. Like, that's crazy, man. Yeah, it was pretty crazy. I tried uh, I tried my best to get in contact with uh, Mike for this as well, to get, like, the two Rubioni's, you know, for this podcast. Yeah. But, uh, you know, because he works for uh, – I think he works at BU. He works at BU, yeah. Yeah, so I tried reaching that number, but um, – yeah. yeah you know something fun but you know this is dope man like i'm this is crazy like i i you can make a debate like you might be the real mike aruzioni now <laughs> it's funny my, my my i have some friends that call me the phony aruzioni <laughs> <laughs> friends back home or yeah 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 guys, me... guys i play hockey with out here yeah that's funny, funny. man that's hilarious <laughs> oh my god so did you uh what what was like kurt russell like on set you ever have a combo with him? Yeah, he's great. He's great. Totally professional. Um, like, you know, a great example for people that were entering the, the business to see. Every day he came to work prepared, totally willing to work with the director. He was not a pain in the ass at all. You know what I mean? Like, he was always ready to go. And uh, he brought the fire, man. He was so good in that. And uh, mm -hmm. it's funny, like, when we first started, he kind of kept his distance from us because we weren't actors and there, you know, the first scene we shot were outside of the bus when we're like, there's like four of us confronting him about he's bring, he's brought in another player. Right. And we're confronting him. That was the first part of the movie that we shot. Mm -hmm. And he sort of stayed away from us before that. And I think it was strategic because we needed to be like intimidated by him, you mm -hmm. know, when, when he approached us in that, in that scene. And I think it really worked, you know? So once we did that and there was a few other things and he started to go, okay, these guys, they get it. They understand like Kurt and they understand the character of Herb Brooks and they know when to turn it on and turn it off. And then we, then we got to hang out with him once he was like, all right, these guys, they're, they're cool. You know, yeah. they've, they've figured it out. So that, it was really fun, man. We had a couple nights out on the town with him, which are just yeah. amazing, you know? That's awesome, man. So he, he yeah. Joe, cause you're right. Like in the movie, like, he's bringing the fire and I'm like, damn, like that's tough. Yeah. He was pretty like low key off, uh, like offset off camera. Yeah, he totally was. And you know, Goldie Hawn showed up quite a few times too. So we got to meet her. Uh, it was funny that first night we're shooting, right. We're, we, we went to, um, where were we? Um, hold on. 
I'm back. Okay. Uh, Rossland, British Columbia. We went to shoot in this little town called Rossland. Mm-hmm. And um, so we're out there. We're shooting from like sun goes down. We're shooting all night, right? So you, mm-hmm. we shot till six in the morning freezing our asses off standing outside of that bus right so 4 a.m he comes over to us and he goes well boys i guess hollywood ain't all cocaine and sunglasses now is it It was like just like freezing our asses off it was so perfect that's hilarious man so so you guys so it was filmed what, like, you guys went to L.A. and then it was in Vancouver, too? Like, you guys kept flying back and forth, or? Well, I auditioned in L.A. We didn't shoot any of it in L.A. It was all shot in uh, in, in and around Vancouver. Oh, sweet, yeah. Yeah, no, so that's that's hilarious, because, you you know, you, yeah. you auditioned in L.A., you know, life is great, and then it gets a little cold in, in Vancouver, so it's like, yeah, it's like Herb Brooks in real life, you know? <laughs> He's like, yeah. <laughs> anymore but have you ever uh do you ever meet herb brooks or i did i had a great interaction with herb he uh he came to one one practice we had before we started shooting our director was like hey guys uh herb's gonna you know herb's gonna come today so I'll, i'm gonna call you over to the bench later so yeah, all right so he's like hey guys come over here so we go over to the bench we're all sort of like on the ice and coach herb's sitting on standing on the bench and our director says guys this is coach brooks uh coach this is this is the team and he says how how are you guys doing oh drop my phone <laughs> you're good, says, you're good. Uh, how are you guys doing and i go and everybody was like pretty quiet and uh it's kind of my nature i go yeah you know we're uh we're a little bit rusty right <laughs> he goes he looks at me he goes you must be a ruzioni <laughs> <laughs> yes you must be a ruzioni <laughs> Cause he was always a little bit rusty and everybody just died, man. Like it was, it was so perfect. And so, you know, I, I had a great later. I, you know, I went up and introduced to him, myself to him. I said, Hey coach, I just want to introduce myself. He's like, I know who you are. And I was like, Oh man. <laughs> yeah. It was pretty amazing. And, and he, you know, he passed a month after we stopped shooting. So pretty sad that he didn't get to see it, but. Yeah, no. You know, I'm, I'm fortunate enough to to have you know been able to meet him and and get a few moments with him. It's pretty special. Yeah, no, that's unreal, man. So did was Kurt Kurt with uh, like Herb a lot, you know, trying to you know get fit into that role, or did they talk a lot? You no, know? you know, I have no idea. I didn't, I didn't have any insight into that portion of it. I would imagine so. Mm. You know, I'm, I would imagine they spoke quite a bit about it, but. Um, just sort of funny that you know everybody knows like and i guess the same for me like her brooks kurt russell is her brooks for for most people yeah no you know like because i I was like pretty young when i watched that movie i didn't i didn't even really know the story behind yeah i was a little young right so what back in 2004 so no that miracle the movie was like the real story for me so i was like oh her brooks you know, that's, that's Kurt Russell, you know? That's him. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it's unreal story, yes. man. And, uh, yeah. It's crazy. So, so I've, got, I've got an eight-year-old nephew who just found out that it's based on a true story. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. So, he, just, he had no idea, yeah, that there's a, actually a, a real guy. Yeah. No, yeah. I, I was, like, the same way, man, for a long time, but, like, I mean, as I got older, I obviously, you know. Yeah, you put you put the pieces together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but, yeah. you know, this is unreal, man. Yo, I don't want to keep you too much longer. Is there a time limit you got or? Dude, I'm unemployed. The business is shut down. I haven't yeah. done anything in six weeks, five or six weeks. Mm, yeah. So, no, no. Yeah. This, is the mo- this is the highlight of my day. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad, man. Same for me, man. Same for me. I mean, and- like I said, they're replacing my roof right now with the AC pulled off, so my house is probably 91 degrees, and all you're going to hear is smashing hammers up top. So, <laughs> Yeah, man. I'm better off sitting in the car. So if you got more questions, I'm game. Yeah, no, for sure, man, for sure. I mean, another thing I want to ask you was, um, you know, that scene when you guys are on the line, right? And, like, Kurt's like, again, again, right? And yeah. that, was, that was, like, an iconic scene for you, too. 
um, where, you know, it was like a bunch of suicides, you know, touching the line and back. Um, was that, was that like really like authentic? Was that like, were you guys really like, you know, sweating your, your asses off in that scene or was, you know, what, take yeah. that scene. Yeah. So there were a lot, a lot of scenes that we shot where hair and makeup would come around and spray us with water bottles to make our hair look wet or our face or our shirt look wet. Didn't have to do it in that scene. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, man, that's tough. Like I can see, yeah. I can see. Yeah, they didn't have to do it. Yeah. I, I could see her messing around like, all right, again, boys again. And you're like, come on, man. Like, you know, like, so yeah. it's funny to me because this scene, I get asked about it all the time. It, it's sort of become like its own, legend you know a scene that that is legendary because of what went into it and we shot that scene for three days so we're doing 12 hour days three days i mean we're not skating the whole day but we were getting bag skated multiple times a day mm. to get all the coverage for that scene uh we did have body doubles when they pulled back and they did wide shots that they were stepping in to do that mm. but I remember not eating much more than like a power bar for, mm. you know, several days in a row because it just, you know, it, we just kept, guys just kept throwing up, mm. you know, and it was, <laughs> yeah. uh, it was, it was as, as it was probably the worst I've been bag skated in my, without a doubt, not probably without a doubt, the worst mm. I've been skated in my life. Okay. But our director, before we did it, he was like, you guys are going to want to kill me for the next three days. But I think we can all sacrifice three days for something that's going to live forever. Mm -hmm. And at that moment, we were all ready to run through a brick wall for him. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> like, we're yeah. like, yeah, let's do this. <laughs> yeah, no, that's insane, man. So, yeah, because, like, that must have been tough to manage, too, because there were nights where you guys want to go out and have some fun, and then the next morning, you're skating <laughs> you're skating hard. Yeah. So it's like, that was probably tough. Oh, there were some guys that still went out, trust me. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, we oh, there are just... memories, too, man. <laughs> yeah. There's That's one awesome. guy in particular, and I'm not going to mention any names, but Gavin O'Connor, who's the director, he's like, I've had to cut around him the entire movie and i said why he said because he looks drunk as hell every shot that we have <laughs> like his eyes are just swollen and bloodshot in every yeah. single shot so oh yeah that's that's hilarious i mean it sounds like it was like an awesome time you know yeah it's as good as it gets yeah so like like with the games too like how many fans like were all those fans in the state in the uh, arena was that like real as well or was that so we had, we had, I think, a week where we had 5,000 extras. Other than that, we would have several hundred, maybe four to 500, and they would just position them strategically around so, uh, you know, it would look like if the shots, you know, because not everything is a wide shot, you know. So mm -hmm. they, they would, you know, they would constantly be hurting, you know, hurting the extras around, moving, moving them to the right spots. So, you know, we had coverage. And they also have, like, cardboard cutouts. That's the funny thing. Mm. It's like every every fifth or fourth or fifth seat, it's like a, a cardboard cutout. It's just like a dummy sitting there. Really? And because there's movement around it, you'll never, ever notice it. That's good to know, man. Um, like, yeah, yeah, so we, ha we had like, you know, when you shoot, we shoot the, you know, the, the game-winning goal, we had the whole crowd there because they want to see the place just erupt, you know, once it happens. And then when I'm up on the podium – during the the medal ceremony the whole crowd was there too so yeah it was just a just a few shots that that we had a 5000 but i mean that's a lot of people and you've got the the you know the USA USA that's them chanting it's 5000 Canadians chanting USA USA <laughs> i didn't even think of that that must have been yeah. crazy, man that must have wow so yeah, because, like, I feel like with 5,000 extras, it's even harder to film, right? Because it's, like, they yeah. got on point, like, everything's, you know, so I was just curious about that, too. But do you have a favorite scene, like, a favorite scene yourself in the movie? Or, like, what, when was the last time you watched it? So, it's, I, I watched it, actually. It's funny. I haven't seen it too much. It's, like I said, it's, it's weird. For many years, for, for most of the years since it's come out, I haven't been able to watch it. 
and not relive the entire experience. So you'll watch it and you'll see a certain scene and I'll watch that same scene and I'll remember who was hung over and falling asleep on the ice that day, falling asleep face down on the ice that day in one specific scene. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. And so I, re I remember so much more of the peripheral than mm -hmm. I do of the actual moments in the movie because you got to, like we were there, 60 to 80 hours a week working for five months and two hours of it is in the movie yeah. you know so there was yeah. so yeah. much time that yeah. is just you know that didn't make it so uh it took many years for me to watch it and not critique it uh and just and enjoy it and it really didn't happen until this winter i was at my parents house for christmas in danvers um and I was skating on the pond all day behind their house with my nephew, who's eight. And we're taking, it's like 8.30, we're taking off our skates. And he, he looks over at me, he's like, can we watch Miracle? And I was like, yeah, buddy, we can. <laughs> yeah, that is I was so like, it couldn't have been a better day. You know, it was like, 10 hours of pond hockey with my nieces and nephews and then a request to watch it and just like sit on the couch and drink you know hot yeah, chocolate yeah. and hang yeah. out with my little buddy <laughs> yeah, that is that's unreal man that's crazy. yeah do you keep in touch with anyone from the movie today you know whether it's mike or kurt have you when was the last time you talked to some of the guys yeah well like i saw mike uh you know like six or seven weeks ago like i said i actually ran into kurt uh, you know, I'm not in contact with Kurt. I don't have his number. But my wife and I ran into Kurt and Goldie uh, having dinner in Santa Monica a couple of years ago. And I was like, looked over, I saw him. And I and I leave people alone. Like, I don't, if I see celebrities in Hollywood, I, I'm like, oh, that's cool. I leave them alone. But I was like, you know what? He's probably more known for that speech mm -hmm. than anything else he's done in a 60-year career in Hollywood, you know? Mm -hmm. And I was like, I said to my wife, should I go? She goes, I think you should go say hi to him. And so I approached the table. And it's funny because I, I get it too. Like when you feel somebody recognize you, there's, there's an energy to it. When they're approaching you, you, you can just feel it happening. And I could tell by their reaction, they could feel someone approaching the table and they did not want to deal with me. <laughs> right? And I was like, uh, I'm sorry to interrupt, guys. I just... Kurt, it's Rizzo from Miracle. And, and like his whole body just turns and he goes, oh my God, Rizzo! <laughs> He's like, Goldie, Goldie, look who it is! And wow. then my wife, my wife was sort of standing back to let me do this, you know, giving me space to do it. And she said she got the biggest kick out of seeing his reaction. <laughs> So that is hilarious. Yeah, so I got to see him. But the guys from the movie, I do, man. I see them. There's uh, five of us still in L.A. So we, yeah. we'll get together for, for breakfast every few months. That's, that's crazy. That's, and it was one of their birthdays yesterday. I called them yesterday. So. Oh, yeah? Who, who was yeah. it? Uh, Sammy Scarina, who played Steve Janicek, the backup goalie. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got this sweet stash, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I got I yeah. got. I, I yeah, see you throwing it out too. I, I see that. <laughs> yeah, I gotta hide the double chin. I'm 41 now, you know. Yeah, hey, story. Yeah, hey, I wish I could throw <laughs> it like that, man. Like m mine comes in bad. It, like it, when it's quarantine, man. I like there's some interviews. Like I look really bad. I got like red beard going. Like you know, <laughs> in quarantine, I'm rolling out of bed. Like it's yeah, rough. it's rough. But that's a that's a crazy story about you and Kurt, man. Like that's a yeah. It was one of those things that I thought, you know what, if I don't do this, I'm going to regret not saying hi to him. Right. You know, it's going to, it may be uncomfortable for a minute, but like, I'm going to regret it if I don't say hello. Right. Right. So do you think yeah. like, it, it, like, cause his bet, he was like facing away from you. Right. So he didn't, he didn't. Yeah. Yeah. I, pro I came like in perpendicular. Yeah. I mean, and, and I could just feel his energy is like, as someone approaches their table, you know, they're just like, trying to pretend this isn't happening and waiting for someone who works in the restaurant to like <laughs> usher me away you know yeah 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 that's awesome man that's awesome he was he was so cool man he was so cool 
That's all. Awesome. Did you guys talk a little bit about the movie, or was it like a quick? Yeah, he just was like, "What are you doing?" What? what he, he, no, because I didn't even know if he knew I was still in LA, or you know that I'm still involved in the business. You know, who knows? Mm. Yeah, no, that's that's awesome, man. What a crazy, yeah. what an awesome story. Yeah, you yeah. Guys, you guys got to get a miracle reunion going. You guys have to hit hit the street yeah. with Kurt. <laughs> you know, it's funny. We've actually been trying to the the. The, it was the 40th anniversary of the Miracle on Ice this winter in February. And they had the whole team there and they were trying to get all of us there too. And Kurt and Al Michaels and like a whole crew. And it ended up not coming together, but it was like, oh man, that would have been cool. Yeah, no, man. You it would have been cool. Hopefully soon, man. Like you guys could get that all together, you know? Like that'd be, yeah. That'd be dope. Which is it's that, funny. Uh, we, we've been trying, we've been talking, a few of us are like, what if we did like a miracle pond hockey tournament and just like hosted a pond hockey tournament? And the guys are like, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, so how sick. fun would like how fun would that be, right? That would be dope, man. That would be dope. Yo, count me in, man. I'll be there. <laughs> count me as one of the five thousand extras. I'll be there. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, that's that's awesome, man. That's so. Did yeah. you, uh, Al Michaels too? Did you talk to him? Yeah, I got to meet Al when he was – because he came in after the fact, after the movie was all cut together because he had to lay his voice over, mm -hmm. you know, over over the track. And um, that was cool, too, because, I mean, what an iconic call. Do you right. believe in miracles? I mean, and it's the original call. They, they put it in the movie because, you know, I guess they had tried to record it and it just mm -hmm. wasn't happening. And Al was like, no, let's, even if the sound quality isn't there – you yeah. can't, you just have to use the, the original. you know, the original piece. I think that was yeah. a really good call. Yeah, no, absolutely, man. And I mean, that that's just, that's awesome. I mean, Miracle is such a classic, like I said, iconic movie. Um, you know, you were also in uh, Thor too, right? So, yeah. So, you know, th this is funny because you said like you're, you're out of college, you didn't know, you know, you didn't have too much experience acting, a bunch of college kids on set doing Miracle. And then, you know, a few years after that, you're you're in Thor with some big names like Chris Hemsworth, you know Natalie, yeah. Martin, uh, Christian Bale, they talk Anthony about Anthony Hopkins, like, Anthony Hopkins, yeah, like crazy. Talk about that adjustment, like. You know. So that was cool. It was I, actually it's funny. I have one line in the movie, which right. is still amazing. Yeah, man, it's, it's amazing dope. how how difficult it is to even get one line in a movie. That's like. I was so spoiled from the start, you know, that I didn't know how difficult it is. Um, I shot for three weeks. I shot several scenes and I ended up getting one line. So we shot out here outside of L.A., north of L.A. and like Santa Clarita. And then uh, for a week and then I went out to Santa Fe, New Mexico to shoot for two weeks. Um, and it was awesome. It was an amazing experience. Yeah, that's that's awesome. So do you remember having conversations with any of those guys or? You know, it's funny. Like I it's the weird the, the thing i found out miracle was such a unique it's such a unique project so if you do like a movie that's like a, a war film right like band of brothers they're all together the whole time so every single shot most of those guys were there every day we right. shoot miracle we're operating as a team every single one of us with the exception of i think o'callahan the kid who played o'callahan mm -hmm. mike he wasn't there on one day because it was a scene where he had hurt his knee and he was off to the doctor. But for four months of shooting, every single one of us was on set every single day. But in a movie like Thor, things are happening all over the place, right? Mm. So I really only met the people that I was interacting with in the scene, which is the guy, Dale, who was mm. in the scene with me. Mm. You know? So cool. it's like, it's you really you get to say hello to them, but we don't right. have the same interaction, you know? Right, yeah. So, like, that was – so you'd probably say, like, that was the main difference between Miracle and Thor, you know? Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm assuming, like, Miracle was, like, your favorite experience of all time. I it's the best – it's, it's yeah. the best job I will ever have in my life. Mm -hmm. no, matter, no matter what I possibly do from here on out, there's no way to replicate it because it was so pure – and it was it was just so pure and such a perfect experience walking into it completely blind. Now totally jaded. <laughs> you know, now 
I know how difficult the business no, is. You got it, man. You got it. I, I believe in you, man. I'm serious. I'm, I'm right there with you. You got it, man. You killed yeah. it. Like you said, you had that was the most legendary, may have been one of the most legendary sports scenes of all time. I'm the one. Yeah. I mean, so iconic, man. So Nothing will ever be that good. It's funny. My wife has been a working actress for 20-something years, right? She worked all the time. She has tons of commercials. She's on guest starred on every single TV show. And she's like, everything I shoot goes on TV or in the movie theater, and then it disappears. Mm -hmm. She's like, I've been doing 20 years. She goes, 0.01% of, of projects made stick around. She goes, and the fact that it was your first project, she's like, <laughs> it, it's like, she goes, it blows my mind. She goes, right. people work entire careers and never have anything like that. That's yeah. I mean, and it's very, it's very true. It's never, whatever I do, I, it doesn't matter. It'll never be as that'll be the one. Yeah. You know? Insane. So she's been in the business for 20 years. Yeah. She's been in it, you know, probably closer to 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> we'll keep it private. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Man. Yeah. That's crazy. Um, yeah, so I mean, talk to us about a little bit about your business today. I mean, I know it's you know a crazy time, um, but yeah, you have your own yeah. your own business today. I mean, what what's it? How does um talk about that adjustment? Well, it's funny. The whole entertainment business shut down on Friday the thirteenth, which is weird weird enough as it is, right? But it was Friday the thirteenth. They were like, "No, we're shut down. Go home." So I do. I still act when it comes up. Uh, but I do, I do big sculptures for movies and TV. So like whatever somebody needs made, I make it generally out of foam, sometimes out of wood with a chainsaw, I'll sculpt it depending on what it is or like ice sculptures with a chainsaw. That's so awesome. what a weird, if, if acting isn't a weird enough job, being a sculptor is like really weird, right? How did, how did you get into that? How did you... So when I came here, I moved to L.A., I, I, um, I found out pretty quickly that I sucked at auditioning really bad. Uh, and I, I would too, man. <laughs> I would too. And it's I not easy. Had, yeah, like I had a massive amount to learn about acting. Uh, so I needed, I needed work. And then I started working in construction. I was renovating homes, which is just something that I, you know, I knew I had a you know, base knowledge of it from back home. And uh, I met some guys who were contractors and they would, I would come and renovate houses with them. And they would, if I had an audition, they would be like, yeah, take off. They were so cool. They were so good to me. Uh, and then through them, I met another guy who was a production designer. Um, mm -hmm. And he hired me to start doing all these art jobs for him for like photo shoots for like fashion photo shoots. I'll tell you the weirdest, <laughs> weirdest job I had. What's her name? Um, Hannah Jeter, Derek Jeter's wife, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't, I can't remember her maiden name, but her name's Hannah G. She's a Victoria's Secret model, right? Yeah. So I was doing all the, making all the props for this photo shoot for Direct TV, and they were sort of making fun of this product called the Hoppa. Do you remember the Hoppa commercials? I don't think so. I, I feel it like was like it was like a cable service, but you know they had all these guys with Boston accents. It was the Hopper, but you know, oh yeah, its, yeah, yeah, yeah. its logo was a kangaroo, and they were like, "Yeah, the Hopper, the Hopper," right? <laughs> so I do that. So I so I get all the props and make all the props for this commercial. So I had to get a kangaroo suit, right? And so I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm working this day, and uh, they're like, "All right, well, we need somebody to get in the kangaroo suit." And I go, "Well, the suit's right over here," and they were like, "Well, no, we need you to get in the kangaroo suit," and I'm like. <laughs> Okay, so I get in the kangaroo suit, and Hannah's got boxing gloves on. Oh no! She's kicking the shit out of me in a kangaroo suit. <laughs> you get stuck in that, man. That's you got screwed, right? So yeah. she's punching me, and my head is just going. It's a big, stupid kangaroo head, and right. I'm like, holy <laughs> shit, man! I'm getting whacked around. I can't, and I can't see him coming either, right? So then she uppercuts me, and there was like a chin strap on this kangaroo head, clips my chin, and I start bleeding. Oh my <laughs> god! I'm like, I'm not getting paid enough money to do this, right? So 
I go, I call my dad on the way home. He's like, how was your day? I go, dad, I got the shit kicked out of me by a Victoria's Secret model while I was wearing a kangaroo suit today. <laughs> what, what, what was his response? Was he like? He was just like, what? I can't believe that jobs like this exist. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's insane. That's hilarious, man. I'm yeah. Just, what an experience. I mean, what a great Yeah, so, so it's like I got into the art world and started, you know, doing stuff. So then I ended up doing – someone needed a sculpture. I ended up doing it. And then it sort of just took off from there, sculpting. I, my background is in art and graphic design. My minor's in the fine arts. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's – sculpting is sort of on a big scale is like halfway between art, you know, arts and crafts and construction. So yeah. it's like pretty good fit. So, yeah, I make a lot of like big – big things for yeah. movies and tv that's awesome man. so what was um what was like the most recent movie that you worked with um like to have your sculptures in uh what did i do so last so there's a new tv show last fall we made some cool ones me and my buddy dave for i don't even know if it's on i think it was going on netflix but it was jim henson what was it called it was like a late night talk show hosted by aliens Right. So I can't even remember the name of it. We did that set. I just worked on the Orville doing a cool set on the show, the Orville, Seth MacFarlane show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, awesome. another thing you might have seen if you watch the Super Bowl this year. I'm assuming yes, you watch the Super Bowl. Oh yeah. You watch the, did you watch the commercials? Yeah. Okay, so Walmart had a commercial with all these like aliens and crap, they're like flying into the Walmart parking lot for yeah. pickup, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then all of a sudden Flash Gordon comes flying in on this like huge jet ski. Yeah. I made the jet ski. No way. Yeah. So that's like the kind of thing. That's yeah. And that, that thing was totally made out of foam. Entirely? Yeah, totally made out of foam. Then hard, they, we hard code it like, you know, like truck truck bed liner, like a rhino liner? Yeah. It's hard coated with that material and then we paint it. Wow, that's that's a that's totally weird job, huh? How long did that take, man? Did that take probably it took two, the two of us six days, I think. Jeez, that's a grind. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. It's fun gotta, though. Super yeah. fun. You gotta do um we gotta have some uh, ice sculptures in the bot you know how Boston does like the ice sculpture contest? Yeah, you gotta bring, you gotta do some of that. Bring the heat, man! I gotta bring the heat. <laughs> hey, I'll vote for that right away, ASAP. <laughs> no worries. I keep telling my wife I want to do. They have that ice hotel in like Sweden or Finland or something like that. Yeah. And you can go. And I told her, I'm like, I want to go sculpt because they have artists come over mm. and sculpt each room. You have to make a proposal of what you're gonna do, and then you mm. show up and sculpt the room for them. And I was like, I want to go sculpt the room, and she's like. Really? Yeah. I, think <laughs> yeah. trip, though. I yeah. thought it would be cool, right? Yeah, because they have yeah. um, they have the ice castles in New Hampshire. Yeah, I've been there, and it's it's nice. They're man. cool, right? Yeah, I mean, I mean, like, yo, this is pretty cool. Like, I'm not having a crib here. I'm not living here. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. but yeah, no, that's awesome, man. Well, you know, do you, maybe to wrap up, uh, are, are you a Bruins fan? Are you are you Boston? Yeah. All yeah, I mean, I'm really struggling with with uh, the goat and Gronk going to Tampa Bay. I mean, <laughs> I don't want to talk can, about. Can we mourn for a second here? <laughs> I got I got a big uh, Tom Brady fat head right on my wall, and like, yeah. I just have to. I hate to say, it, like, it just pains me that like him and Gronk now in Tampa. It's it's been yeah. a crazy 2020. It's been cool. You know, I was lucky enough to do all the props for an Under Armour commercial probably eight years ago with Tom Brady. I got to really? meet Tom Brady. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was cool, man. So, uh, but, yeah, so, I'm, yeah, I'm a Boston fan through and through. I mean, I go to the Kings games out here. I tell you, I don't, I've, lived, I've lived in L.A. for 16 years plus now. Mm. I don't own a Kings jersey. <laughs> Hey, that's respect. So, did you go to? <laughs> I wear my Bruins jersey. Yeah, the let's go. That's what no I'm talking about. Who they're playing? Either that or like you know the Ogie Oglethorpe jersey. Right. So when they had you on the jumbotron, did you have like the the Bees jersey? They did they show. You know, it's funny. 
It was clips of me from the movie. It wasn't me. They didn't even oh. know I was there. <laughs> wow, that's even more of a coincidence. I thought they should. Yeah. They didn't even know I was there. Yeah. Oh wow, that's crazy, man. That's insane. Yeah. Uh, what What was Brady like? Was he chill? He was cool, man. It was funny. He was a lot more slender than I thought he would be. Really? Like, yeah, he's just like long and lean, and I was like, oh man, I thought he would be like, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Buffier. Yeah. yeah, I try. I tried not to fanboy out too much, you know. Just, yeah, like, yeah. hey, just got to tip the hat and keep it yeah, going. Yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> like, hey, respect, man. You you've had an awesome yeah. career. I mean, it's unreal. So, yeah. keep it up. um, yo, whenever you're around Danvers, man, let me know. Let me know. Oh, it's, yeah. You know what's funny is like I know Brady has watched Miracle, but it's funny that I was probably working with him and he had no clue yeah that's right yeah because you interesting right it is yeah so he he didn't even like bring that up like did you guys have a conversation about that oh and i don't bring it up right you should you, know? you should flex that's man. Funny. i have friends that are still finding out about it out here really they have no idea yeah it's pretty funny like i'll get a text from someone going wait what what the hell? <laughs> like, why are you on my TV right now? They, they still uh, don't even, it, it didn't even register. Yeah. It's funny because all of our friends work in the industry somehow. So you never know everything that everyone does, you know? Right. It's just, yeah. Crazy. And well, it, well, Miracle is just like iconic though, you know? Like you think they know right away, you know? But like, it's so, you keep it low. Yeah, yeah just keep it yeah. low key. Respect. Let them find out. It's even more exciting when they find out if you don't tell them. Yeah, hey, that's respect. Man. I, love it. I love it. Hey, man, stay in touch, man. Keep it up. All right, brother. Thanks so much for uh, stopping by. Appreciate it. And uh, we'll see with the Pats this year, man. I don't know. Hopefully they figure oh. it out. So, uh, yeah. But, yeah, stay in touch, man. Let me know. And All right. Appreciate Hopefully you having me. Business too, so. All right, brother. Peace. See ya.